And you're welcome to the program. Well, this afternoon, the internal contest of the new patriotic party is heating up as the candidates aspiring for the national leadership role in the governing new patriotic party have less than two months to seek the endorsement of party delegates ahead of a crucial national party conference slated for July this year. Now, the NPP is set to hold regional level elections by the end of next month in order to pave way for the national contest. Well, even before the dust settles, four different individuals have declared their intention to contest the longest serving general secretary of the party, John Boydou. Well, let's bring you a breakdown of their profiles. Well, the party secretary himself, John Boydou, has declared his intention to contest. Uh, and uh, his profile is right here for you. John Boydou, as we know, is the uh, general secretary of the governing New Patriotic Party. And actually, uh, he stands now as the longest serving national officer in the NPP history. So uh, he's a, for, uh, a force actually to um, contest with, and uh, he is saying that he would want to retain this position and then increase the fortunes of the party. But there's also uh, more for you. We know uh, about, this is Charles Bissou. Um, uh, he um, is uh, also in the race, uh, but, but for, this is um, one candidate as well who uh, we're dealing with this afternoon. Uh, Frederick Oparianza, who's the uh, member for the 4th, 5th, 6th and 7th Parliament of the 4th Republic of Ghana. Well, he became the first member of Parliament um, for Ghana, um, representing particularly the Suhum constituency. So first MP for the Suhum constituency uh, in January 2025 after emerging the winner of his constituency polls in 2004. And this is the very man we're focusing on this afternoon as he shares his views with us on what it is that he's bringing on board to change the fortunes of the NPP. Well, when asked about the contest, the general secretary himself, the incumbent, John Boydou says, he has delivered more numbers in terms of electoral victory to the new patriotic party than any other general secretary the party has ever had. I took over as general secretary when we had 122 seats, not 137. I took over as general secretary when the party almost every now and then is in one problem or the other. I remember in 2015 alone, our National Council of Elders met the national officers close to no less than 14, 15 times in a year since I took over this party. I have never been invited the entire party invited to settle any issue at all. Mm. I've brought entire peace and tranquility in the running of our party. The kind of things that I've developed within the party in terms of support the party. Such as? Be specific. For instance, there's no party that supports its party constituency region on a monthly basis ever. So you pay them now we on do, a monthly basis? We pay, we not pay in terms of salaries. We pay for their operations. It's never we, happened to the MPP before? No, no, no nobody has been able not to Not when that. you were in power in 2020 no, no, to 2028? No, 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 ever. Never. So it happened under your watch? It, it happened under me. What did you and do which, special which to make is, it happen? Is it because the man because behind you, you know, no, decides no, that? No, it, it, it is a purposeful decision and wanting to invest where it's important. Mm. I remember when we were about starting this process, we decided that in 2016, 2017 thereabouts, when we decided to uh, open nomination for uh, uh, orphan constituencies, the resources that we got, we could have used it at our headquarters we invested wisely and began the process of supporting our constituency party on a monthly basis. And since then, we've been able to do it consistently. Mm -hmm. It has never happened before. This is a party, if you are looking at the most successful period of our party all time in history, that we've had the highest votes, highest parliamentary representation. It is 2020 and 2016. And that's where I was general secretary. 2020? 2020. We've never had 137 seats in parliament before, ever, in our history. Yeah, but of course, I mean, that, that's also because <laughs> you've expanded the number of members <laughs> of parliament. But even before you expanded, we didn't have it. But we've you never know, had, had look, hung level, parliament before until... No, no, we were going to have that. that. No, no, wait. We are going to have that in, the in 2008. Yeah, but we never... When, did. please, when 
His Excellency Nana Adudankwa Kufaru won the presidential. If he had won 50% plus one, we were not going to even, only even get a hung parliament. We are going to have a parliament that the pre sitting president mm. is minority mm. in parliament. But the fact we didn't have yeah, that. You see, and even that, it is a negative for us. Mm. If we had, it, I would have wished that we were able to win one touch and even get minority mm. in parliament in those days. You know? So it is nothing strange that has never happened before. I'm saying for those who want to throw in their hearts, as you are saying, well, they just want to also give it a try. You understand? Mm. But because, you think they won't, because they, won't, they won't pull you down? Oh, I don't think so. Fredo yeah. is a former member of parliament. He former, knows this game. You know his game of what? Running a constituency. Yes, that one I agree. But, he's, but he still ran it into a level that he lost the parliamentary primaries, internal primaries. Mm -hmm. Said that whoever took over from him increased the margin ever. So if we had not been careful, we would have lost the seat in Zoom. You understand? So it's not just about being the longest serving in parliament and all that. We are talking about a national party. We are talking about rallying the entire six million people behind the party. We are talking about organizing the party in 275 constituencies and over 28 branches throughout the world. Mm. That is the point that we have. So if you manage just a small place and you think that that is enough, well, you don't even have experience. None of them, well, maybe your party may have Brian attended definitely has experience. One, one national, I haven't even seen him in national executive before, ever. You understand? So, and you see, sometimes they will say, oh, uh, when you became general secretary, you also didn't have an experience of a general secretary. The difference is clear. The difference was that I was the national youth treasurer. I was the national youth organizer, for which reason I was a member of national steering committee, I was a member of national executive, I was a member of national council. I was a national organizer. And for which reason I was a member of steering committee, national, uh, national executive, national council, before I acted as general secretary. So it is not the same mm. as somebody who has never even attended some of these meetings before. And I have never had the experience of organizing on a mass scale before. But this is our party and this is democracy. Democracy, look, uh, 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 Macron, he was contested just last mm. uh, and he won massively. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, as I was that, the, the margin that, wasn't as big. Oh, uh, well, you see, one thing you must also realize that politics is a process and timing determines a lot of things. So that's the man there, John Boydou, the incumbent and longest serving secretary of the uh, governing New Patriotic Party. He talks about one man who believes otherwise, who believes that he's in a good position to provide what he describes as quality leadership for the new patriotic party. And you heard John Boydou talk about uh, Frederick Oparianza there, arguing that he's not got the clout to actually run the governing new patriotic party. Let's find out from him what he thinks about some of the claims in there. It's such a good time to be having you here on the polls. Thank uh, you. So let's start off from uh, your general secretary. He believes that he's increased the fortunes of your party than more than any other general secretary that we've had for the NPP. So if that's the case, then he's done a, a good job. We should urge him on, isn't it? Well, I mean, if that were to be the case, as you rightly said. But let me first use the opportunity to thank you for the invitation and also to uh, extend my felicitations to the uh, viewing public and to my team and supporters as well as the members of the New Patriotic Party. I'm happy to be here with right. you today. Um, indeed, I have had occasion to talk severally about this matter, um, particularly uh, the fact that the things that lead to uh, an election, and I'm happy the General Secretary acknowledges that elections are a process. Uh, leading to, say, 2016, you had to do the party reorganization elections in 2014. You had to do the flag bearer elections in 2014 mm. before uh, also choosing the parliamentary candidates in 2015, all of which then led to the 2016 Election. uh, elections. Uh, if my memory serves me right, at the time all these elections were conducted, he was not the general secretary. We had a substantive general secretary in place in the person of Kobne Japong uh, before the uh, suspension in November 2015. Mm. At that time, all of these elections, from party reorganization, 
through the uh, selection of the flag bearer, and another on October 18, um, 2014, mm. to the parliamentary primaries on 13 June right. 2015, had all occurred. So uh, all these things which, for me, are the antecedents mm. to having a good uh, election in 20. Uh, 16, which led to our massive victory. Mm. You cannot attribute uh, any So basically what you're him. telling us is John Boydou cannot lay claim to the electoral fortunes of the NPP in 2016. Absolutely. If he believes that it is the doings of a general secretary that leads to that result. Well, certainly, well, it's partly the case, isn't certainly it? Certainly he was not a general secretary. Y you agree that it's partly the case that the general secretary of the party who coordinates the affairs of the party, such a position is instrumental in whatever advances Cert you want to make as a political party. The office of the general secretary is the fulcrum around which you have the resource mobilization for the party, the resource development. Mm. And here I'm not just describing right. um, monetary resources, mm -hmm. even the human resource. Right. You know, there are several things that go into getting the right persons mm -hmm. for certain uh, positions mm -hmm. to become parliamentary candidates, mm -hmm. to even lead uh, certain efforts of the party. Right. Even our communications mm -hmm. uh, arm of the, right. of the party. Right. All this reside right within the ambit of the General mm -hmm. Secretary's mm -hmm. office. Yeah. Don't forget that all the uh, organizers of the party, from the national organizer right. to the women's organizer, the youth organizer, mm -hmm. the Nasara coordinator, mm -hmm. And their deputies, all of these persons work from the office of the general secretary. So, so you agree with the, him when, when he says, I've done a good job, I've delivered the figures for the MPP. And, and the point you're building on about him not being present even at a time when Afoko and Co were reorganizing the party, how feasible is that, uh, I mean, uh, hypothesis that you're drawing, particularly when we know that what matters is the election itself, but, the general but, elections and yes, not necessarily that, the primaries. He delivered the, the elections, the national elections that is results where for you. I agreed with him when he himself said that the elections right. are a process. Okay. So you have several things mm -hmm. leading to that process. Right. And so if you want to measure mm -hmm. his own performance in total, mm -hmm. then you can measure that for the time when he was in total control as general secretary, from right from party reorganization mm -hmm. um, in 2018, mm -hmm. leading up to the uh, election in uh, Koforidia, which then made him mm -hmm. substantive general right. secretary. He had been acting mm -hmm. prior to that. Right. And then it made him substantive uh, general secretary, mm -hmm. went through the uh, parliamentary uh, primaries in 2020, mm -hmm. and then to the elections mm -hmm. in 2020. Okay. So we've all seen the results. Well, and that's where I'm coming to, that even though the results 2020 was not favorable, in the end, you still had a victory. But I heard him saying it was good. He said, we have never had 137. And that it was good. I heard him. Uh, when you but, 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 but I mean, so why not? even why? saying that it's what happened in 2020 right. was good. Uh, not, not entirely, but, but how about looking at it from this way? The fact that you were going into the contest with a former president for the very first time. The, the political dynamics at the time, or even in the 2020 elections, were, were not necessarily the same in 2016, you agree? But history has shown us that be it uh, the NDC or the MPP, going into the second term, the president's votes appreciates. Mm. The parliamentary seat of the ruling party appreciates. In 2000, President Kufu won after a second round. Okay. And then we had 100 seats. Mm -hmm. The NDC had uh, 90 four seats, mm -hmm. and then, well, 92 and there were right. independents and uh, uh, some smaller parties who right. joined the MPP to right. have 108 right. seats to do business. However, when 30 seats were added, mm -hmm. the NDC then came to 94 seats, and the MPP had 128 seats, mm -hmm. with the other smaller entities and independents joining us to have 136 right. uh, seats to do business. So clearly, you could see the appreciation mm -hmm. there. Same thing happened with the NDC in 2008 when they had their uh, own, uh, I think well, they won, they won with about 119 and we had 111. So your argument is after every first time you need to appreciate before. You see, not necessarily need to appreciate, right. but you see a trend. Appreciation. It is a trend and it's been there 2004, uh, 2012, the mm. NDC moved from 119 to mm. about 152. Right. We had one, two, three seats adding up to make the 275 after mm. they added 45 new seats. So the expectation for every 
political pundit was as the MPP, after Nanado had introduced free SHS, after several major policies, 1D, 1F was on course, several other policies were on course. The expectation would have been that not only would the president's own votes appreciate, but we would have even added on to the 169 seats. That what, the, what you're telling me now reminds me of the day when you, in fact, uh, gra granted some interviews explaining why you decided to run yeah. the race. A and you claim that you stand for quality political leadership. I is that to say that, well, if you look at what John Boydou has done, he's done his part, but he's performed poorly, and that's why you're providing what you term as quality. It is not, the quality is not necessarily in reference to him. Right. And with all due respect, I am not saying that uh, he is... It doesn't matter, right? He, he doesn't have any quality in him. Mm. No, mm. not at all. Mm. Uh, if you listen to my speech that day, I referenced the fact that we are in a new era. Mm. With, with internal in the party and also with external political factors where we need a new uh, way of thinking politically, a new way of doing things. If we continue doing things the way we've done in the past, or are currently doing them, we will not be able to take the party from where it is now to where we want to see the party go uh, in, in future, especially with the impending 2024 elections, mm. where NDC is clearly gearing mm. itself mm. up uh, mm. for, for battling. And this is the time where many say the NPP as a governing party, which is seeking to break the aid, would need someone with so much more experience. Uh, there are reports out there, the EIU, for instance, is predicting that the opposition NDC may win the next elections or they would, of course, need to vi revitalize their uh, points and then, of course, eventually win the 2024 election. So this is the point where some experts say you need a more qualified or experienced hand to deal with the affairs of the governing New Patriotic Party. You had John Boydou there uh, talking to Evans Mensah and indicating clearly that all those contesting him have never been at the table before. You've not even contested a national elections within the party itself before and so you don't have the experience. I may not have contested national elections, but I, do, I did hear him even struggling to remember whether I have been a member of the, any of the national organs of the party. Indeed, I was a member of the National Council of this party for 12 good years, from 2009 to 2021. Where was John? I am surprised. Didn't he attend all the meetings I attended at um, the various locations where these meetings were held? He didn't see me. Was he sleeping during the meetings because I was there. Indeed, in 2014, mm. the party almost decided that instead of holding conferences the way we know the conferences are held, Kumasi here, there, they were going to break it down into uh, mini conferences right. and hold them mm. in the regions. It took my intervention as a member of the National Council to petition the national chairman, then uh, Jake, and council was reconvened to take a second look at the matter. Mm. And it was decided that my petition be upheld. That is how we ended up in Tamale in 2014. Mm. So just by virtue of the fact that you have been with the party holding all kinds of positions, if you can't remember these simple facts and acknowledge them, then you are beginning to remind me of the man who claims mm. to have been an assemblyman before I've been MP a number of times. Mm -hmm. I was a default, mm -hmm. was a vice president, communication minister, became default president, mm -hmm. and then became president, mm -hmm. and is asking for re-election. Then you are beginning to uh, look like that person, because clearly, your competences will then be called. But, but I guess it's, it's, the, the important of his point will be yeah. about contribution to the NPP. Yeah. For, for those delegates who are now coming into the party who may not necessarily know what you have done for the NPP, what are you really bringing on board. I, I guess that's a, a big question that will stare you in the and, face wherever and, you go. And I was hoping that is what we'll have opportunity mm. to really talk about right. here today because uh, that is what matters to the party. It is not that I have been a polling station mm -hmm. uh, executive before, mm -hmm. I'm the longest seven mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. executive of the party. Mm -hmm. What do these things But, but track record, so, uh, sorry for cutting yes. through, but track record does matter. For instance, uh, you see him there questioning your performance even as a member of parliament. That's at, just at the constituency level. He claims parliament. that you, you lost that, such a, an election, and, for and, instance. And, and there is nothing wrong with it, considering my constituency. My constituency has never, before me, seen an MP, any MP, since Kwame Nkrumah's days, do more than one term. 
my constituency had never belonged to an opposition party. I held the constituency down for two terms in opposition, 2009 to 2017. So I held it two terms in power, two terms in opposition. Never happened. So if after that I go to an election, internally, I've never lost elections to the MDC. I went into an internal election. Right. And for whatever reasons, we get a new candidate. I, don't, I did not even go to encourage people not to vote for the party. Mm. They do skirt and blouse, as is the case in mm. several places. Mm. I mobilized resources mm. and supported the party. And that is why you would see then that there was absolutely no divisions, mm. even though I had lost an election. Mm. And you should follow all my writings right the day after that election. And you right. see that right. I was in full support of the candidate mm. and did the best that I could. Mm. We did help show up the votes. Mm. So the votes going up in Suhum in 2020 was not uh, some verdict being passed on me and my mm. performance. No, if you called anybody in Suhum, they would tell you that I, I was in, indeed revered as the mm. MP mm. for the entire 16 years. Right. Otherwise, they wouldn't have kept returning me to well, parliament. So that may so, be in the past now, but yes. as to what you're bringing on board. Very good. What, what so are we likely you to allow see me if, if you're, you're me. elected? Right. Good. So I was saying then that the interest of delegates should be where the party is today. Scan the aspirants and let us see who has what it takes to deliver the party to where we want to go. Okay, I mentioned a short while ago about the fact that the General Secretary's office of the party is the place where, if you like a clearinghouse, where all these various um, entities, the office of the organizer, the office of the woman organizer, everybody passes. We've been talking about uh, doing a, a, a constitutional amendment and even getting um, MMDC is elected. This was the proposal from our government out of the office of the General Secretary, what, what were the preparations on the ground, for instance, to make sure that we would have qualified persons going into those contests? Whilst we in Parliament were busy um, trying to get that I mean, law passed, I mean. what work did the General Secretary's office do mm. in support of that? So the office needs its image lifted, to build new relationships with the um, the, the um, electoral commission, for instance, and I've done some of these works back with McMenu or Hinto and Co. Don't forget that as the chief whip of the party back in 2009 to 2013, I was a national officer of the party because I was elected by national council. Mm. And so for all those purposes, I was just like maybe a deputy general secretary or mm. one of the other officers who are also elected by uh, national council. And that is how I first entered National Council. And I had then the opportunity to serve the party in that capacity across the entire country. Mm. So I wasn't serving just my uh, constituency. Mm. Okay, so I bring on board that ability, okay, to, if you will, raise the profile of that office to be able to deal with all these uh, bodies and entities that the party needs to deal with, develop a whole new uh, array of relationships with them. I've been involved in elections in West Africa, not just Ghana. Mm. I've been on ECOWAS for nine years as well. I've built all kinds of external relationships. So resource mobilization, both internally and externally, for the benefit of the party, mm. I bring that on board. I have an exceptional quality in managing uh, people. And when I say managing people, I'm not talking just uh, people working for me. I'm talking about managing relationships. Mm. Uh, whilst I was the chief whip, you, you would love to hear some of the people who were members of my caucus that I had to manage. You're talking uh, Kandapa, you're talking uh, Hakman Uswajima, you're talking Kennedy Ejopong, uh, several people, um, PC Apio Furi. You know, it wasn't an easy thing. I was mm. quite young right. then, but I discharged my responsibilities very, very mm. well. Well, so well. When you hear right. today that a lot of the MPs support my cause mm. and uh, all that. Mm. It is for the fact that they have all seen me perform and they do believe that what the You'll party needs now mm. is somebody who is cut in my mood. Okay, uh, that's one side of the internal story. Mm. Uh, another crucial side is that the NPP will be going into the 2024 elections with a fresh candidate. That's granted. 
Uh, there are reports on that. And we know that constitutionally speaking, the president, uh, he hasn't announced that he'll be altering any part of the constitution as of now. So he will not be in that contest in 2024. So you're presenting a fresh candidate to go into the 2024 elections. And that's why you're claiming that you want to break the eight. I mean, from where you are now, what does the NPP need to break that eight? I have spoken about a number of things that we need to do quickly. And first is to be more tolerant of each other. It's very important. If we can't tolerate each other and forge true unity, it's going to be difficult for us. I've spoken about the fact that we need to um, exhibit more inclusiveness, okay? So that people with um, certain skill sets, people with certain experiences and backgrounds are given the opportunity within the space of the party to bring that to bear for the benefit of the party mm -hmm. and not excluded because uh, they are perceived to be of some stock or of some background. Mm -hmm. It will not augur well for the party. Factionalism need, is creeping into your party yes, already? Need, it has always been there, mm -hmm. but it is the result mm -hmm. of it. We've mm -hmm. always had people having different right. interests within the party, mm -hmm. but it's the consequences of those mm -hmm. which I'm describing right. uh, now that I can't tolerate you because mm -hmm. you did not support my candidate mm -hmm. in the last mm -hmm. election. But in the past, we tolerated people like um, Francis de Sien, mm. like Freddie Blay. He came from the CPP, but he's our national chairman. Mm. So that spirit of tolerance mm -hmm. needs to return. It has to um, show itself properly. So you're basically saying your current crop of leadership are not too tolerant? I am not just saying that mm -hmm. against the leadership. Right. You were asking what we need to do as do. a Okay, so, so th this has to be collective. Part, collective, mm. all of us, mm. at every level, right. national, regional. But of course... Um, if it will uh, be stronger, it will be stronger because leadership is exhibiting mm. that it is. And that's where you, you believe you come through? Yes. I was able to hold on to Suhum mm. for such a long time right. because I, I, I tolerated people. But that's um, you, you're, you're going to be dealing with the Ashanti region um, and other uh, I was parts even, of the of I was the even party. dealing with the NDC in Suhum. Mm. I was tolerant of them. And so you had people in the NDC mm -hmm. who were very really sympathetic mm -hmm. towards, towards my cause. But, but whatever so, the case may be, if, yes. if the delegates give you the opportunity, the 2024 elections will still come. Yes. There are reports out there indicating that the NPP cannot or may not break the eight. I agree that there are such reports. But yeah. then if we look at ourselves first, and then the things I'm beginning to point out, mm -hmm. I hadn't quite finished. Mm -hmm. If we would work on those. Mm -hmm. I'm sure in a year's time, if you did that report again, you could find... So, so if, if we were to present, what you're arguing is, if, yeah. if we were to present the ERU report, for instance, which is predicting that you may not break the aid, yeah. I'm sure, uh, again, I'm sure after they didn't a year, say that right. we may not break the aid. They, their research would have found mm -hmm. some reasons why we, we may not break right. the aid. But, but you are saying, yeah. be that as may, if we present that same report again yeah. by next year, the factors will change and it will tilt in, in, in favor of the MPP. If we do the things that we need to do. Uh, which includes voting for you? Not necessarily voting for me. If mm -hmm. you vote for me and I am showing the things that mm -hmm. need to be done and mm -hmm. you do not change, okay? So don't let us make this thing about it is just vote for Paris and you right. vote in the eight. Right. I am not that kind of politician. I believe I have the requisite skills and experience mm -hmm. to bring to bear mm -hmm. to help our cause to break the eight, mm. okay? But I'm not saying that if you don't vote for me, mm. you won't break the eight. Okay, because, because we don't have all of the time, uh, one of the critical things, uh, you, you've been talking about points, we, we may not go through all the points, but one of the critical things uh, which some political watchers believe your party has to deal with is the silent factionalism that's brewing between the uh, camp of the vice president and one of the forerunners, Alan Kojutre Martin. You, you've seen some of the names out there as well, those who would be uh, contesting to fill the slot of the party. Uh, are you aligned to any of them, first of all? And even beyond that, how do you believe that your, your party can close this rank, uh, I believe which, the party, which could help the, the NPP going forward? The party has cautioned that it is not yet time. The party itself is reorganizing uh, itself and has cautioned that such activities of these aspirants be suppressed mm. for now. Mm. And so um, I believe that for now they are trying their best also mm -hmm to try and suppress same. But of course, uh, people are enthusiastic and you can never completely uh, suppress political uh, activists. So uh, it's happening. I do not belong to any uh, particular camp. However, 
I have very good relations with both uh, major camps and all the other aspiring uh, personalities as well. I am on call basis and talking basis yeah. and visiting basis with all of them. Mm -hmm. I go to their homes, I talk to them, their offices. And so I believe they also are all very uh, comfortable with me, uh, which is really my objective. Because I, when I become general secretary, I want to be able to work for and with whoever becomes the flag bearer uh, of the party, which will be also very instrumental mm. in our ability to break the eight as, okay. as we, we try to chart that path. Uh, Operans, I'll be giving you the opportunity to speak directly to delegates in just a minute, but one more issue which we uh, need to tackle is about the performance of the NPP, which definitely will give the chance to your party to either win or lose the 2024 election. Some say the verdict is out there. Your presidential candidate then in 2016, now president, President Akufado has failed Ghanaians. What's your take on that? I don't believe so. I, I do believe that things are difficult. The president himself has admitted that. The uh, finance minister has come in, also said the same. But it is also true that the current difficulties that we face as Ghanaians is not peculiar to us as Ghanaians. It is a worldwide thing, which are two major factors. <laughs> People do not want to accept them uh, especially our political opponents, that COVID has had a major impact on the global economy, right. and so has the um, Russian uh, and Ukrainian conflict. Right. So, yes, things have happened, but I do believe that the president has delivered on a lot of the major pledges that he made to this mm. nation through the MPP manifesto, right. through the numerous campaigns that were held mm. across the country. So okay. it is my belief right. uh, that properly communicated, properly analyzed, pound for pound, mm. we will see that uh, the president has done extremely well. Okay, in just a minute, when an average delegate goes to the poll uh, in July at your national delegates conference, they look at their party card, why should they endorse you briefly in just a minute? They should look at the various aspirants and who is best fit to carry the party's message to Ghanaians. Essentially, uh, that is one of the prime um, uh, jobs that you're going to entrust to your uh, general uh, secretary and the other national officers, and also who has the qualities to better manage the party and lift the image of the MPP. And I believe I best fit that um, profile. All right, then. Uh, I'm grateful. And he's in the race. Let's see how that goes. Frederick Oparianza, thank you for your time. Now,